you know, two-time Emmy and Oscar-nominated production designer Bob Shaw. We are thrilled beyond yeah, belief that you all were here to film The Gilded Age, and we're wondering why Troy. What, what was what was about Troy that made you decide to come here? Uh, with Troy, it's the, the the biggest selection of houses of the period that we really uh, needed to feature. Um, Washington Square from the 1830s, 1840s, 1850s, 1860s. In New York, there are very, very few examples of architecture, certainly domestic architecture, that are prior to the 1890s. And here, it's just like a field day. Um, you can go up and down so many streets and look in all directions and, and see all the houses that are, that are correct for us. And I always say that in New York, I, I can give them like the Beverly Hillbillies, where they can look at the building and they can't look to one side or the other side, and they can't look across the street. Okay. And um, here, you can walk for blocks, and uh, it's it's an amazing uh, example of, of of the architecture of the time. I don't think there's anything else like it on the East Coast that I'm aware of. Wow. That's You're probably great. aware if there is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think. One of the things, of course, we always talk about preservation mm -hmm. of the architecture, and of course this is one good reason to mm -hmm. um, have this, but certainly I think when you look at our unique buildings and, and the streetscape um, that we have, did it, it made it easier to film it? Was it easier for you to really um, imagine the, 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 the structure of the movie um, with, with this location it, in mind? It made it much easier because just today we filmed a scene on this block, and they were able to put the camera at one end and shoot all the way to the other end of the block and have characters walk walk down the street and then sometimes they'll they'll be looking at them against one building and then sometimes they'll look in another direction and every direction we looked was was good and and we can't find that in New York City. Yeah. Did you find it just easier as far as getting around? Um, what else? What else? What, what else was? Well, I liked that I just virtual. stayed at a hotel in town and I walked everywhere most of the time we were here. And um, I, I didn't realize that your phone kept track of your steps. My my um, my my busiest day here. I, I walked 27,000 steps around Troy. Oh my gosh! <laughs> in one day, which I'm told is about 14 miles. That's amazing. Yeah. But, well, I, I remember watching you walking up and down the street, and walking up and down yeah, the street. Yeah. And, you know, figuring out. Uh, so, what was your favorite location? Um, I think there were too many to say. There were too that many to say. <laughs> I mean. Um, we loved filming in the music hall, mm. and um, both from it being an example of, of the music hall of that period in such in such beautiful shape, and um, for its well-known acoustics. And I couldn't resist uh, standing on the edge of the stage and whistling a little bit and seeing how it, how perfect the acoustics were. So that that was um, that was fun, and um, uh, doing Monument Square was great. Um, we had come earlier and we had scouted some smaller streets and even though not all the buildings are of the, of the right period, um, uh, there are, it gave us a little bit more of the scope of, of what downtown New York would have been back in the day. And uh, The side streets just don't do that, so the, the, the big open, uh, even, even, even though the monument really had nothing to do with New York. Right. Um, the general Did you kind of work around the monument? Or maybe um, they tried to make sure it was only seen um, in, in cert, with certain locations, because believe it or not, we were able to go around the, the, the triangle and say, this is one location, and then this is the entrance to somebody else's office, and then we go across the street, and it's the entrance to somebody else's office, and then we walk, are gonna walk here, and then around the corner, we're, we're gonna have the entrance to our theater. Mm -hmm. And so um, we were able to play it as a lot of different places, and um, in some of them, they decided it was okay to see the monument, and in some, they decided that we had to avoid the, mo the monument, so. Um, but uh, I mean, the corner store for us was, was just perfect. And, and so many people came in and said, I remember when this was a jewelry yes. store. I remember when this was the store where you went to uh, buy a gift if you were going to a wedding. And, right. and right. Uh, I mean, nobody remembered when the whole thing was the early Freer's department store. No, God no. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, like obviously, yeah, right. they'd have to be uh, like 160 years think, old or right, something. Right, yeah. Um, but, um, I, I feel kind of invested in, in, in the architecture of Troy, and I keep saying, I hope someone restores the Cannon Building. Um, the, the top of it is so beautiful, and uh, it, it's in, in desperate need of repair. And um, I, I hope that it gets repaired at, at some point, because it's, it's to have a, a block-long building like that from, what, what's the year on the, on the Cannon? 1835. Yeah. Right. I mean, 
It's one of the longest commercial, one, one of the longest running commercial buildings in the country. It's still in use as a commercial as a commercial building. And there, there are very few cities in this country that can say that they have, you know, a building from 1835 that's still in use and, and been in continuous use. Continuous use. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah, that's, despite a couple little fires here and there, that's which a, I think is probably what you would probably notice. But that's something very unique to Troy. I mean, I mean, you know, as a, as a historian, that you just don't find that in very many places. Okay, how does the um, how have the tax credits been? Has that been working for it? You know, now that New York State, you know, did kind of movie tax credits and things, has it made it easier for you to, for you? Uh, I mean, you've done a number of movies and television shows, so and, um, of all different periods, it so has it, it has it, it has made it easier, or? or it's it's encouraged the it's encouraged the studios mm -hmm. um, to to come to New York. I remember um, in the early '90s uh, working on films and. Uh, they studios would only come to New York with a gun to their head. They really didn't want to come to New York. They thought it was too expensive. They thought mm -hmm. it was too difficult. And for a long time, there were only films that featured the sort of down and dirty um, uh, aspect of New York. And they were wanting to, all the people in, in, in Hollywood think that there are more alleys in, in New York than there are. There's like four that you can name yeah. in Manhattan. Not like here. There are a lot we of alleys. <laughs> you have a yeah. lot of alleys. Almost all of them. They should yeah. be writing, right, writing alley chases in for Troy. Yeah. Um, but it, it changed everything because people uh, in Hollywood did not want to come to New York or the East Coast at all to film. Oops. Good. You got it. I got this one. I've done this one before. Yeah. <laughs> not really. The um, talking about the kind of the Cannon Building. So. And, and not being an outsider, because you're from the Northeast, you're from you know, northern New Jersey, right. and, you know, New York, Pennsylvania area, so you're familiar certainly with the East right. Coast. Um, what, what would you say to the, 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 the people of Troy who sometimes walk down the street and don't know what's right in front of them, and to really understand how important it is for us to preserve this amazing architecture? You know, I think of it as, you know, people do say, why do you, why do you want to spend money to preserve our architecture? And I think... Uh, it, it's a, a sort of a key to our to our past. It's sort of the same way that a person, um, you know, for personal growth, will go to see somebody and and explore how their own personal past or their own personal traumas influenced who they are today. Mm -hmm. And I think in that way, you know, the study of history, you know, informs you as who we are today and what traumas cost mm -hmm. cause us to be the way we are and what what triumphs caused us to be the way we are. And uh, certainly the history of Troy uh, being, you know, one of the, the, the most wealthy cities on the East Coast and, and a whole different time when everything depended on the waterways and, and that's when uh, Troy was at its peak. So I, I think it's important to, to sort of know who we are as a, as a, as a country and as a people, you know, through our, through our history. I'm sure it's yeah. great. I can't can think of anything else you'd like to share with us <laughs> about your time here. That's wonderful. Wow, that's a great. Yeah. But, you, but I really do think. It's no, like I really that do. Way. Well, like, I do too. Like what yeah. made you that? What made yeah. you that way? And right. then, uh, right. and and you you learn you learn that way. And then, just I look at things all the time, and I, and I look at piece, pieces of architecture, and I look at there's so much beautiful wood carving in the city, mm -hmm. and you think that these were working class artisans who did this yeah. and, and it, it's a little sad to think that those people were doing this beautiful artwork right. and this beautiful carving and maybe now the equivalent person is working in a fulfillment center mm -hmm. and you know it seems that you know being able to create things like that certainly must have been more satisfying for a person Right. You know, as, even a, as an artisan, if, as an artisan, right. even right. if they, you know, didn't become a wealthy person, I, 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 I think there must have been tremendous pride in the work they do, and to mm -hmm. say that, that, um, that they, yeah, hand carve these railings and doors. I had an experience of, of going to um, scout Saint Denis in 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 Paris. Mm -hmm. We were working on The Sopranos, and they were saying, well, there was a scene, and maybe we could do it in Saint Denis. And I'd never gone there; been to Paris many times, and. Um, all the great kings of France are buried there. And I think, you know, I look here and I don't get a sense of, of divinity in this church. I get a sense of humanity. Mm. And you look and you say, someone worked in that apse. Yeah. And 
they worked their entire life and it was never finished. Right. And they, they got it from, from the ground to like this high their lifetime. And it was a good year. There was gruel in everybody's bowl and no one died of the right. plague. Right, and, no one died of the plague. And, but yeah. you, you think of all the people who went into making these things. So, you yeah. know, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like a, it's less of a religious thing and more of a thing about people to look right. at this architecture for me. I, one of the things that always fascinated me was the, um, you were at the castle. You yeah. went at the castle and you had all these Scottish stone carvers that came in after the Civil War and were doing all the wonderful acanthus leaves and, and all that stuff. And when the kind of City Beautiful movement ends, do you know where they all end up? In Barry, Vermont. Really? Carving gravestones. Oh, wow. And, and it's like, wow, they took that amazing skill. Yeah, all, you, you look at all, well, you've seen them. You've been mm -hmm. looking down looking down at Washington Park at the Gilbert House and yeah. the castle. You go over to the Capitol, you see the same yeah. things and the little gargoyles and, right. and all that stuff. And um, yeah, they end up going up there and carving gravestones because they're all the work, you know, kind of stops. After but it's interesting 20. to think yeah. that a lot of things you again probably know more than me that um, a lot of things weren't drawn so much as they were sort of like discussed and it's like mm -hmm. yeah he does good acanthus leaves oh if you want gargoyles he's your right, guy. right. <laughs> you know yeah um, I see him yeah right, yeah right. and yeah. You know, so it's, it's, it's you see the history of the people yeah. I think. you're right I think you're right it's it's it is interesting and I you, you you can't help but look at all the other all the other components that happened you know everybody talks about you know, the hearts and the cluets here in the course of this house and you need the money to be able to pay that but it's all these workers that you know but also even middle class in. homes yeah. you know at the time yeah you know had that sort of detail mm -hmm. anyway we, we when we talk we just talk we just talk keep and talking talk. and, <laughs> and um, <laughs>